Rub up your engines! Today I'm going to talk about a very common problem and how to fix it. A car that idles poorly and takes off poorly only when you're starting off from stop to go. But it's okay once you're going down a road. Now there's many things that can cause a bad idle and poor takeoff from zero to say 15 miles an hour. But in this case, the obvious things have already been done. The air filter's been changed. The spark plugs have been changed. And in this case, even a mass airflow sensor was changed with a Denso original. Since this thing only does it at idle on like zero to 15, it can't be a clogged fuel filter because your fuel filter filters the fuel. The faster you go, the more fuel you need. That would mean if you were going 60 and you floored it, it would accelerate really bad. It's not getting enough fuel. But this thing goes 60 to 70 like no tomorrow. It's just the low ones. So it's not the fuel filter clog or the fuel pump having low pressure. It's something else. It's often a vacuum leak. And you can check them with a smoke machine if you want, but they're not that cheap. Got my vacuum machine hiding down here. You inject smoke into the intake, and then when the smoke comes out, that's where the leak is. But they don't always work, and here's why. What you're looking for is a vacuum leak on the intake system. When it leaks, it sucks air into the engine. So you get a leak when the engine is sucking the air in. When you use a smoke machine to find the leak, the engine has to be turned off, otherwise it would just suck the smoke in and burn it. You're putting a little bit of pressure in with smoke, hoping it finds the leak, which works fine on big leaks. But on small leaks, it often doesn't work because they only leak when the sucking pressure comes in. You might have 14 pounds sucking pressure to suck the air in, right? But the smoke machine, only puts out like 2 psi. Not only is the smoke going in the opposite direction, but there isn't much pressure. So you might have a leak that only works when the engine's sucking in 14 psi. Here's how you find them. You get a can of something like carburetor cleaner, have the engine run, then spray it around looking for leaks. Get the carb cleaner and you spray around right here. See how the engine goes up and down? Means there's an air leak in there. Now this is a known flaw on these Toyota engines. The intake manifold gaskets go bad. They're very hard to test. In this case, I hooked up a smoke machine that didn't show any leaks there. That's two pounds pressure pushing out. This is 14 pounds sucking in. You can see it sucked in the carburetor cleaner and made the idle go up and down. So it's time to take this baby apart, put a new intake manifold gasket in it. I'll take the stupid beauty cover off and get some working room. We'll remove all the little hoses that are in the way. That's all plastic. We got to take this hose off and we got to remove the throttle. So we'll take the rubber part off first. It's easier if we move the air filter too. So we'll get that up. Now we can pull it off easier. Then we take the four bolts off. Then we can move the throttle out of the way. There goes the throttle assembly. Then you remove all the bolts holding the plastic on. They're on tight. Bunch of them hiding inside where you can barely see them. I don't want to drop anything, so get a magnet on a stick to catch them. That way you won't lose them. See how much easier it is with the magnet on a stick. You can see now it's going to come right off. And with a little wiggling, we'll get it off. Then we can pull the old gasket off. You can see there's a notch here, and there's a notch here, and a notch there. So it goes on this way. You want to feed it on, so the notch goes in the hole. And the bottom notch goes down here. They snap in, they don't need any kind of glue or anything. And the reason they go bad is because this is plastic, but the head is metal. The metal expands and contracts differently than the plastic. So eventually they fail. The new gaskets, especially the one made by Felpro, are better designed. They should last the life of the car now. Then you just carefully wiggle it so it goes in its hole. Sometimes it's easier said than done because of all this plastic crap. There we go. Hurt my finger, but it's in the hole. And you can see, once lined up, it slides right in place. Put the little top nuts on first because they guide it in place. Then it won't slip. There's one over here, and there's one over here. Now it won't fall out of place. We'll put the rest of them in. One, two, Three and four have a little tab on them, so we put the tab on, then put the bolts on. Get them finger tight, all of them. Now here's where most people go wrong. This is a plastic intake manifold, bolted on 
to a cast aluminum head. You can easily crack the plastic, but if it's too loose, it'll leak. So you really need a torque wrench. You set it at 22 foot-pounds of torque. Then it will be perfect. Start with the middle one until it clicks. Okay, that's 22 foot-pounds. Then you go out, out, out until you get it all done, alternating from side to side. You go one out on the left and one out on the right. This way, they're not too loose and they'll suck air, but they're not too tight where they'll either crack the plastic or warp it. You gotta use a torque wrench on this plastic crap. The throttle back on. You gotta line these two up. That's the hardest part because there's hoses all over the place. It'll get stuck on everything. First put those two on so it stays in place. You can use this gasket over. They never go bad. Put on a nut. We'll get the two bolts. And while you're at it, don't forget the bolt down there. A lot of people forget it. They get the top ones and they forget this one. Now of course realize the throttle body's bolted plastic and that's different. That's 15. So we gotta set this down to 15 foot pounds. Then we can tighten these up in a cross pattern too. And then the last one. Then put your air intake hose back on, wiggle it on, make sure it's on tight, stick the air box back in its hole, and clamp on the filter and put all the hoses back on or you'll get air leak. Don't forget this little one down here, that's important. And last but not least this one, don't leave any of them off. Now we can start them out and test. Out comes the spray tester and notice the idle doesn't change anymore. It fixed the air leak. Even though it didn't show a test with a smoke machine, carburetor cleaner got into those little holes, showed it was sucking air, Making it rub up and down, that fixed the problem. Less than $10 part from AutoZone. And of course, any air leak can do it, so when you're done, be sure you get this boot on nice and tight and clamp it. It'll work okay without clamping it until it gets hot and vibrates loose. You want this super tight. Check for tears, rips, check this too. That's a little loose, we'll tighten that up too. Then we'll put on the stupid beauty cover. I hate these things. Line it up, bolt it on. Away we go for a drive. So it's road trip time. Put in gear. Is it shaking? No, it's not shaking anymore. Is it hesitating from zero to say 10 miles an hour? No. Got plenty of pickup for a Toyota Corolla. Let's face it, it's not a race car, but now it's going Perfectly fine. You can hear the engine going from zero to, we're going 30 now, so you can't complain. The pep is back, and it only costs less than 10 bucks in parts. You pay a mechanic a lot of money to do this job, as you can see, you can easily do it yourself. Let's say you don't have torque wrenches. Places like AutoZone, where I bought the gasket, will loan you them free. You give them a credit card, they charge it, and then when you bring the tool back, they give you your money back. You can't argue that. Got some good zip now. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Kaizen said, I want an indestructible engine. There's good engines, bad engine, and great engines that are virtually indestructible. If you had to pick one American, one Japanese, one German, and one Italian French engine, which four would you choose? Okay, if you picked an American engine, Ford V8 engine, and an F-150, that's normally aspirated, not turbo, not GDI, not all that crap. They can last a really long, long time. Now, Japanese, you want an engine that's gonna last forever, get a Toyota Tundra V8. <laughs> they're great, but they're not making V8s anymore. So maybe you'd have to get like a Toyota Corolla. They're pretty indestructible too. Now, German engines, the Germans actually make excellent engines. That's not their problem. But if you wanted an engine that probably would last the absolute longest, you would go out and get a Mercedes diesel engine. Those diesel engines can last a really long time. And Mercedes still makes, they don't import much to the United States, but in Europe, they got all kinds of diesels. You know, they make fire trucks over there, they're Mercedes fire trucks so they do make very good diesel engines now italian french engine <laughs> all right i would have to say a french diesel engines they make decent diesel engines the italians don't make anything decent or indestructibility that's just the way it goes but the french have been making diesel engines for a really long time if you got a renault diesel get one that's been made for a long time i got friends in england they got them and they love them and they drive them forever so that would be the case of that so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos remember to ring that bell